Is it something nasty? Oh, probably very big and nasty, yes. That didn't, that didn't sound good. You know, probably. Yep, that's a uh, that's a dead end. Ander? These sounds start getting a little bit louder, Lynn and Gimbal, as you guys start heading uh, more north. As everybody actually starts heading north, you can you can see that the the chamber takes a, a sharp right turn, heading back to the east. And you can you can continue to hear that as it's in that language that you can understand. All right, so we'll come up on them in surprise, right? Are we agreed? Right. I like how that sounds. So just give me, everybody give me stealth checks because just as you turn the corner, you can see a huge uh, beastly presence, the Minotaur. Why don't you guys, uh, actually all four of you up there, why don't you all give me stealth checks, give them out, uh, you can give them to me in the open. Oh yeah, they definitely heard Ander coming in his heavy armor. They definitely heard Zero as well. So you see a Minotaur. And in fact, as you guys around the corner, he hears, I guess, Zero saying something or you guys are telling him to shut up and stuff. Well, you see one Minotaur as he turns around and says, Ugh! and he pulls out his huge weapon and he charges in pulling his great axe out. Everybody roll initiative. This time it wasn't my fault. <clears throat> <laughs> I'll yell surprise. <laughs> In your party suit? Yeah. All right. Looks like Lynn, you're up first. Okay. I will... Uh... I will run in and go ahead and attack him. Do I see right. another one when I come you in do here? As you do. As you come around the corner, you see another another Minotaur that is to the south. And he is definitely charging. And he's pulling out his great axe, lifting it up. But you actually intercepted this first Minotaur. And then you see that there is a uh, another cavern that goes to the north. And then you see a cavern over to the east. So go ahead and do your attack on him, because you you actually intercepted him, and and you can actually see that the chamber to the east goes into another area, and you can see this like destroyed, looks like a destroyed statue or something like that. Yeah, it looks a little familiar. All right. Combat breaks out. The fighting starts. You attack the Minotaur, and he parries it away with his great axe. 11 versus AC is a miss. Okay, so the next Minotaur, which is the Minotaur down here uh, to the... Well, actually, yeah, this Minotaur charges up. He's actually going to do a, a charge. I need to move a minimum of 10 feet, which I do. So I need to move in a straight line, but I'm moving 20 feet. And then I need to hit you with a gore attack as he tries to hit you with gore, Lynn. But with your great and stout uh, AC, it does miss. Uh, he basically slides on some rubble as he's going in to, to charge you and gore you. And he misses. So you are not uh, affected by charge. All right. Uh, let's see. Yeah. It looks like a... Ooh, I do like that. So it looks like this Minotaur is going to go reckless. He is definitely going to go reckless. I think I made a reckless uh, pendant here. I did. I did. Nice. All right, so Minotaur 1, he goes reckless. Uh, that will happen next round. Minotaur, 
All of a sudden, you hear more running from the north. And a minotaur comes from around the corner. This map. I don't like the sound of that. I'll say, friends, there may be more. Yeah, there is. Look at the combat this... tracker. Tracker, there's definitely more. Oh. So Although, Dave, I think... And tries to gore you as well. Dave, you messed up on the combat tracker because you've got four uh, enemies on there. We only have the three Minotaurs. I'm just messing with you, man. Oh, the one is invisible. You don't even need to, to worry about that one. <laughs> I could. I'll bring that. I'll bring that uh, spine devil in. All right. So it does get a uh, ten foot. It's not going to get a a charge because it's not. I mean, it is. I mean, he did run ten foot straight. So yeah, I, I am going to try to try to gore you here. Oh man! And I actually Ouch. I do get a gore yeah. in there. That's that's definitely hit. That's not good. So let's go ahead and get you some damage. So this thing just did not parse right. So it'll be a total of nine damage to you. Okay. And now I need to do a saving throw strength saving throw yeah, this this whole thing all right so you are successful you're not prone you gather yourself you're not knocked down so let's go to the the minotaur that you're engaged with wow doesn't <laughs> that that sucks you got three minotaur <laughs> on no. yeah all right so this not minotaur good. misses you go to Cardus. Yeah, they had actually really good rolls, so... But then I did figure you guys would probably roll higher than a 14 as well, so it just kind of worked out that all three Minotaur get to go in a row. How tall are they? They're about 9 foot, 8 foot, 7, 9 foot. They're large. They're a huge creature. They're, they're large. So, Cardin, what are you doing, bud? As you hear quick, the I just had another idea. I could use something off my robe of useful items. As the fighting happens, you hear you hear someone say, Grit! Lump! Is that you? And it kind of echoes throughout the chamber. Grit! Lump! I'm over here! I'm being cooked alive! It's hard to get me out of here! Alright, so Cardus, what, what are you doing, Cardus? Okay, here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to move over here. And I want to cast Cloud of Daggers between these two Minotaurs um, to the south, towards the kind of like the back end of it, of them. Sure. Cloud of Daggers. Let's see. It's a concentration spell. Let's see. It's one action. You fill the air with spinning daggers in a five-foot cube of a point that you choose. So... Where do you want your point to be? Um, it's it's between the 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 two in the south. You can you can draw a pointer by holding down both oh, yeah. mouse like, buttons like right. and draw a pointer like that. Like right here. What the hell? Why do you do it again? Hold down, uh, go to wherever you want, and hold a hold down both right and left mouse button and just move the line in the direction you want it to go to like between between these two Let's see uh see what I mean? all right so let's see uh fill the air with spinning daggers in a cube five feet on each side centered on a point you choose within range I believe that has to be a point within the middle of a of a square and then the 
all of the squares around it, which would be like the, it'll be like a three by three block basically. And then every creature will take 44 slashing damage when it enters the spells area for the first time or on a turn when it starts. So, yeah. So when you cast a spell using a higher level, it'll go up by 2d4 every time. Well, I, could, I could cast it in front of Lynn, but I don't want to impede his attacks. Well, they're not going to take... You're not going to take any... They're not going to take any damage initially from it. It's just whenever they start their turn in the area or whenever they if they enter it so basically what i'll do is i'll make a i'll make a box for you so it's going to be like a uh, a three by three box all right something like uh like this and see how uh the the, the point will be in the middle and then you'll affect so you want to affect basically you want to affect these two guys here right where the the daggers are spinning around yeah yeah, because uh, anything with a, like a point of origin, it's pretty much in the in the center of the square. All right, so a cloud of daggers forms around here, and at the start of their their turn, I'll go ahead and I'll tell you to put the the cloud of daggers damage onto them. Okay. All right. All right. And so I will anything else? It. Okay. All right. So gimbal, you're up now. Okay, I'm going to move up and cast Shatter, and I'm going to get all three of these guys. And I'll go ahead and carve out uh, area of protection for Lynn Tarnum. Just oh, because thank you. I'm feeling nice. <laughs> I'll need to move up here so I can get a good view on him, and then uh, Shatter him. Vacation, so yeah. All right, so let's see. Uh, let's do some uh, get them guys targeted. Right, very nice. So two successful saving throws, one failed. Number two, I'll go ahead and do damage. Wow, nice rolls. All right, so all three Minotaur are wounded, two only take half damage. Very nice. And then I'll move back. Too bad it wasn't like Thunder Wave too, huh? Uh, yeah, so that'll be it for all me. All right, so let's go ahead and go to zero. You're up now. So I'm going to cast Ice Knife, centered on uh, Minotaur 3. Right. All right, it failed its saving throws. Dex saving throw. Okay, that was going to be on a, a level 2 slot. Level... To uh, spell slot. Okay. Alright, so it's going to take a total of. So it gets an extra uh, 1d6 or. No. Uh, let's see. It'll be. Well, that's uh, for cold damage. When it explodes, yeah. So what we'll need to do is make a. Let's see. I think we already made one, didn't we? No, we didn't. So we need to make a another 3d6 pendant for you. Deals will take six. This will be cold damage. I believe it's cold, right? Yeah. Right. So there you go. There's a new 3D6 pendant for you. So you'll take that second level spell slot and now drop the damage on the Minotaur that's affected by it. So let's see on a hit. Explodes within well, all, uh, <laughs> all the adjacent will get hit, and then I have a, I have I can use a, um, a sorcery point, a couple of those to protect Lintar. Okay, yeah, I was going to ask if you were going to do that. So, go ahead and do that. Go ahead and put the damage on. Let's see if it's a. Uh, I think I already did it. Within five feet. 
Hmm. I mean, it is a large. Well, I'll go ahead and I'll let you affect the two Minotaur. I'll go ahead and drop the 3d6 on them too, and then give me a d20 for your wild magic roll okay. too. All right. So it looks like uh, ice knife My hit four, doing, 12, yeah. and ten. Oh, let's see. You hit Minotaur three twice. So let's see. We need to take the the ten off of three, and then we're gonna need to put it on. Let's see. On hit takes hit or miss. The shard then explodes. The target. Okay. So all right. So that target, and then every target within five feet of it will take the exploded. So okay. So there's that for Minotaur three. And then we need to take the 10 off of Minotaur 3, because you hit it again. So we'll put him back at 29, and we'll take that 10 and put it on the one on Minotaur 2. And I'll do that one more time for Minotaur 1, which is to the left. And then that will be the explosion. You use your, deduct your spell points for Lentarm, and then go ahead and expend your spell slot, and then go ahead and give me a, a, a roll for Wild Magic Surge. And don't roll a one. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> might be good though. Even though a you know, even though a center ball uh, fireball centered on yourself might be pretty interesting. Nope. Oh, You're safe. Close. No surge. Close but no cigar. Alright, let's go to Ander. What say you, Ander? Alright, I'm gonna move up. Beside zero. And I'm going to cast uh, Command on Minotaur 1 and Minotaur 3. So I'm going to cast it as a second level spell. I believe you get a Wisdom second, saving throw. Second level will allow you to affect, what, two creatures? Two. And I can speak their language, so... Alright, so you speak a one word command, one is successful with a crit, and one is which the unsuccessful save was on Minotaur number three, the Minotaur uh, that's in the middle. Alright, can I command Minotaur three to attack Minotaur one on his next turn? Uh, I don't think you can have them attack anything or jump off a cliff or anything like that I, I let me reread well, as this long one. as it doesn't it says as, as long as it doesn't uh as long as it doesn't harm themselves it's a one word command though yeah it's one word one word command like things like it gives you some examples like approach drop flee grovel halt all right so uh, i'll command um minotaur three to flee and that should give Lynn a attack of opportunity. Uh, it's force. I consider this force movement, and force movement usually doesn't do attacks of opportunity. Um, any kind of force. It's just force movement. Uh, there's a lot of debate about it, but you can go ahead and give the attack of opportunity. I'm I'm fine with that. Okay. So it'll be on number three. So just to eliminate the debate, uh, we'll go ahead and we'll just do it. So that's a that nice hit, and then the Minotaur flees away. Uh, I think you have an effect on me. I think you put uh, you have you got divine on there or something like that, Lynn? No, no. It was, uh, you put an effect on me when he charged me and gored me. That was damage to the eight. Piercing. I didn't do Divine Smite. Take your first roll, which would be a five plus five is ten. Yeah. And we'll go ahead and get rid of the other. We'll get rid of the other nine. Happen. All right. So he moves. He's going to run. He'll run his max movement. I think flee. So I'll look back when I heard 
Anders snorting and grunting and stuff. He's like, what'd you tell him? It's moving. Tell him to get the hell out of Dodge. Come on, fantasy grounds. Jesus. Would the cloud of daggers hit it at all? Go ahead and drop dagger damage on there, too. Because he moved. Well, I mean, he was already in there. I mean, technically, I mean, he, he didn't enter it, so. But you can go ahead and do it anyway. That'll be 10 damage. All right. Very nice. All right. So let's go ahead and uh, looks like Anders moved it to Lynn. One of the Minotaurs moved away. So what would you want to do, Lynn? Okay. I'm going to attack. I've got all this stuff exploding in my face, you know. Daggers shatter, yeah. ice knife, and all this stuff. I'm a little frazzled here, so I miss. All right, you do attack number two, and you miss. Anything else? Yep. Nope. I will stay right here and soak some damage. All right. So the first uh, minotaur down here to the south below you, it is going to attack with this great axe. Yeah, he takes slashing damage too, right from the. Uh, he will because he's starting his turn, so you need to drop that on him. And then he misses with a, uh, a critical fumble anyway. So then we'll go to the next Minotaur. Minotaur is not going to go into the to the dagger, so he's so just going to go ahead and attack with his great axe. It's kind of congested here. Really can't do a lot of movement. He's pretty huge. Uh, let's see. So I think this lasts for. one round it's just one turn so it should should have uh you know i'm trying to see if it lasts until the end of your turn or the beginning of its turn so it doesn't say okay here it is follow the command on its on its next turn so it should have done it now it shouldn't have done it instantly so we'll just kind of say that it it did its turn here and that's when all of the the damage and stuff happened so Next time we use command, it'll be on the next turn. All right, so Cardus, you're up now. All right. Um, I'm going to throw a firebolt at Minotaur number one. Sure. It's a nice hit with an 18. What's up, LMP? All right, three damage to the Minotaur. Very nice. Well, Rolling high. <laughs> yeah. Well, just take level five. That'll go to 2d10 next instead of 1d10. Can't wait. All right. Gimbal. My attack here. Nice. All right, yeah, nice crit with a firebolt. Very nice. And don't forget, Cardus, you got that you got that crit too that you need to use. Oh, that's right. Yeah, I need to utilize that. Oh shoot, it automatically doubled it Ooh. for me. I'm sorry, Dave. Yeah. No, uh, let's, let's see, let's take off uh I quadrupled it. <laughs> oh, did you hit the crit <laughs> button or something? <laughs> no, it, it, did, it automatically did the crit, but I doubled my dies, thinking it wouldn't for uh, some reason. So you right clicked, I gotcha. That's okay. Yeah. It looks like a, I'll just take 11 off of... I mean, you can leave the 11 on there. It's fine. If you want, you know. <laughs> Zero? I'm just trying to make things easier for you, Dave. I, I see that. On there. I see that. All right, Zero. Yeah, that, that'll be it for my turn. I, he's going to stay right. it. Um, I'm going to do... Magic Missile at second no level. <laughs> yes, <sir. laughs> I'm going to do Magic Missile at level 2. Okay. So yeah, one of the... One Bam. of them actually uh, yells out something as well. Got milk. <laughs> And Andrew could and understand it. it. Alright, Andrew. You're up as you just uh heard the, the Minotaur say something. He said he's gonna kick us. 
It's going to cook you in the cooking pot with the dwarf. You're going into the pot with the dwarf. Jokes on them. Tieflings don't taste very good. <laughs> All right, I'm going to take a swing with Dragon Thumper. Swing away. Ooh. Nice hit with a 20. Ooh, seven damage. All right, round uh, three. Lynn, you're up now. All right, I will swing away at uh, Ooh, Minotaur yes. 2. Lynn, you're having bad luck on these guys. It's not going so well. Uh, okay. No, the uh, the two Minotaurs are going to see if they can hit you, though. All right. Um, I'm going to drop the uh, Cloud of Daggers damage on them. Okay, go for it. So let's see. Is that a, a concentration spell? It is, yes. Minotaur 1 misses. We'll go with the, the next Minotaur. Can't get to anybody else. Doesn't have any kind of long reach. Lynn, you're lucky. It rolls another another one. It's crit yep. failed twice in a row. It's rolling just like me. Thanks, Twitchy. Appreciate it, man. Totally appreciate it, Twitch. All right, let's get this uh, Minotaur. It's over. Hmm, maybe it can get a straight it'll get a straight diagonal lane charge and maybe get a gore in on Lynn Tarn. But to no avail it misses again. Um, but, but heads with my it. spell says when it enters the, the field it takes damage. Give it more, yeah, absolutely. I got another one for you, right, mister. Cardus, what are you gonna do now? There we go. Nice. Um, it walks right into that barrage of daggers. It walks right into it. Threw all caution out the window. See you, Benoit. Take it easy. All right, I'm going to throw... We'll have to do that to... Mm. We'll do that to 21, man. I'm going to throw another firebolt at uh, number three. All right. 18's a hit. Nice job. Yeah, you guys got the... Uh, you got, got the, the heavily... Most heavily armored person <laughs> out there. Three. Yeah, that's okay. All right, Gimbal. Okay, another firebolt. Ooh. Wah, 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 wah. Good, I'll move up a little bit. That'll be it for me. It's too far away. Zero, what you doing? You don't roll on the table for spells, do we? Unfortunately not. He's an evocation wizard. All uh, right. All right, since everyone's grouped up again, I'm going to do Ice Knife. It would be awesome if that was a zero roll, the one. That would be nice. Oh, I'm All right, so uh, a success on one of them and a fail on the, on the other. Okay, the, it was actually a miss on the a attack. A miss, but then... So. They still hit suffer the damage though, right? All right. The let's see. Yeah, I believe it's the the knife, and then I think I'm not. Sure. Let me let me read ice knife again to see if it needs to be a hit to get the explosion. I don't know if it needs to hit to get the explosion. So on a hit. Hit or miss. Okay, all right. So there it is right there. Hit or miss. The shard then explodes. So go ahead and... Uh, it was successful. The Minotaur that you attacked, Minotaur 3. So why don't you do a saving throw for 1 and a saving throw for 2. Or you can just control click 1 and 2 and then do your saving throw and it'll do a saving throw for both. There you go. So Minotaur 1, I see you have both of them. Just go ahead and drop another one on, on 2 really quick. Should have uh, read both of those being targeted, and it only did one's throw. So, All right, so 2 failed. So you can go ahead and target all 3 for damage, and hopefully the damage will, will go on all 3. Got 1 and 2, you'll just have to target 3 and then do your damage and it should give everyone damage. 
There we go. All three of them are, are done. All right, so there we go. Uh, looks like hmm, Minotaur 3 is dead. It died. So you're going to have to roll, you're going to have to put damage on 1 and 2 also because it's not recognizing the multiple creatures, which I don't know why it's not. So Yeah, I've got control on it. Yeah, I uh, see. So yeah, I see it's they're definitely targeted in the in the tracker. But yeah, just go ahead and throw damage on 2 and 3 really quick. Well, the other two, one and one and two. There you go. All right, so they take a eighteen and nine. And I'll stay here. All right. So let's go to Ander for the end of round three. All right, take another swing with Dragon Thumper. I don't know if they're going to get you into the cooking pot. You guys are you guys are doing pretty good. Miss. That's three. Wonder what Minotaur tastes like. Probably beef. I would imagine probably beef. All right, top of round four, Lynn, you're up now. All right, here we go. Let's see if we can take them out this time. If I can actually hit. We got that. <laughs> nice hit with a 22. D20 was spinning. Yeah, it was. Oh, Dave, I forgot my <laughs> wild surge. Go ahead and do a uh, wild surge for me, too. Uh oh. Okay. Oh wait, but that's a <laughs> that's a twelve. That was a twelve sided. Yeah. I don't, I don't, I don't see my. Oh, there's my twenty. Okay. <sighs> Let's see. Give me a one. Oh, I thought we can only two take one of those. Is that is that two right? rolls on yeah, the yeah. table, Dave? Is that what happened? Uh, no, no, no. That would be a nice house rule, wouldn't it? Unlucky eleven. <laughs> oh man. Maybe uh, next section. Yeah, this next minotaur session. here. Next session. <laughs> we'll take that to vote, right? <laughs> this minotaur is in really bad shape. He's he's kind of stumbling around. Got all kinds of gashes all over him. Some of his innards are kind of falling out of his stomach. But he tries to get one attack in. Oh, um, beginning of his turn, the uh, cloud of daggers. Gets. Go ahead and uh, give it to me. But just as he lifts up his axe and he goes to swing down on Ander, he just kind of pauses there uh, and falls over dead. Damn, from the cloud of daggers. Take right. that, you cow. <laughs> so cowman number uh, two <laughs> over here is going to try to attack Lin again. He's had two ones in a row. Oh, wow, look at that. He actually hits. Look at that. Wow. Wow. Whoa. Wow. Watch this damage, too. This is crazy. Okay. So, what the hell? Why did I hit it for nine and four? So, I need to take 10 off. But there was nothing on here. What is this? I'm trying to find out why there's nothing on here. No effects or nothing like that. If, uh, I think it's because of. No, because it's that's on and nothing is on nothing's on Lynn. Hmm, so that's weird. Don't know why. I'm gonna have to take uh, ten damage off of off of you though. So Whew. Yeah. Still hit for thirteen though. Two D twelve. Yeah. Still pretty nice. Nice damage. That that's would be a, a hellacious uh crit forty twelve. Man, that would be absolutely brutal. All right, Cardis, you're up now. Okay. I could probably stop concentrating on the cloud of daggers. Back is, it's it's going to run up here, so why don't you give me an attack of opportunity, Lynn, as well, as he as he tries to run back into the other room. I will do that. And then we'll... Cardis, what, what do you want to do as he goes around the corner? Uh, cease uh, concentration on the cloud of daggers. Okay. So if the, the spell dissipates, then I move over here and cast uh, Ray of Frost. All right. He is retreating back into his chamber. That's a hit. 14. That's a hit. All right. Can you take him out? Mm, not quite. <laughs> well, he's, he's, he's slow. He uses, 
He loses uh, 10 movement off his max movement. Yeah. So now if, he's only got like 90. No, he's he's got 40, so he's he's down to 30. All right, Gimbal. Gimli. I keep wanting to call you Gimli. Gimli. I, haven't had a, I haven't had a player surge uh, since my Thursday. So I'll, I'll run over here and uh, fireball again. All right, fireball away. Ooh, ah. miss. That's it. That's my movement. All right, zero. I'm right, we'll move up. They did really well against these these three Minotaur. They're really Let's see. Good. Got to move around the corner. Uh, you're, you're shooting, shooting through the wall. You're shooting through the wall. There, Sorry, I, I thought that was a, a hole there. <laughs> Yeah, yeah. Um, <laughs> you know, it was a black hole you were looking across the cavern at. Yeah, yeah, I yeah. Like no, I can, I could see that. I I totally I see what you're uh, you're seeing. Well, I'll do a fire bolt, I guess. All right. All right, that's a hit. Can you take out this uh, Minotaur? Or is he going to get in one last charge? Oh, he oh. he lives to see another day. All right, Ander. What say you? All right, I'm going to charge him. Ah, uh, I shouldn't have said nothing. So I'm going to run around this corner. I shouldn't have said anything. I'm going to do the famous Pete Rhodes slide right between his <laughs> legs and oh, no. bam him in the nuts with my dragon thump. I like that. Dragon thump the nuts. <laughs> wah, wah, wah. So you slid through him, right? You went, went under his legs and slid through him? This must be a effort. <laughs> <laughs> you stop a little short. <laughs> all right, so Lynn, you're up now. Uh, all right, so I will... Uh, um, can I fit past Ander on the right side of that Minotaur? Sure. All right, I'll try to take him out. Looks like it didn't work. Man, Lynn, are you gonna hit hit, are you gonna hit anything tonight? Nothing. <laughs> he took a lot of hits though. I did, yeah. He did. He took a couple. These things actually haven't been rolling pretty good. Haven't been rolling too well, actually. All right, let's see. Uh, we're gonna go ahead and try to. We're trying to gonna try to get a hit in on. Let's see. One to two will be Ander. Three four will be Lynn. So we're gonna try to swing it. One more hit on Ander, and that's gonna be disadvantage. Is he attacking at? Disadvantage. All right. What is going on here? It's a good question because protection from evil shouldn't affect his attacks. It, it shouldn't, no. Because he's a, he is a, uh, I believe he's a monstrosity, so. He still hit me. Hmm. Let's take that off. And we'll know to take that off for anything that's not pertaining anyway. So let, let's re-roll that roll. See if it happens again. Okay, so that was the problem. But it's a, it's a little worse, but it's still a hit with a 23. Damage worked okay. So you were successful in any con that you had. What did you have with Constitution? I don't even see anything with Constitution on Yeah, it keeps doing that to me, too. I think it's just automatic. Might be. It's not supposed to. You're supposed to have some, an effect up there that's with a C on it. So that's that's what I thought. So something's a little something's a little wonky. All right, so you take 14 damage. You're heavily wounded. And now we'll go to Cardus. Hmm. 
Okay. Super low, as in volume-wise, everything. Um, hey, what's up, Light and Pat and Passion? All of my my meters are working right. What do you mean yeah, by I guess I'll, uh, low? Low end, as in cast like ray of frost on him again. Because I have I haven't changed anything. Is it is it super bassy for everybody else? Twenty two is a twenty two is a hit. Nice job, ray of frost. So yeah, I I haven't changed anything. All right, that minotaur. That minotaur nice goes shot. down. Nice, yeah, shot. nice shot. Oh, yeah. Ah, well fought, friends. Well fought. And nobody ran. Look at that. We are oh. all here. Shots fired. Alive. <laughs> <laughs> Gimbal looks Just around. kidding, Rain, if you're watching. Oh, she's not watching, I'm sure. I don't know. I'll take it back. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So the chamber to the north opens up, and there is a... You can hear a dwarf screaming, Grit, Lump, is that you? Yes, I'm Grit and Lump. Grit, Lump, that doesn't sound like you. Oh, well, I'm sorry. All right. So you guys entered this cave to the north... It is brightly lit, and as you walk in, it's definitely warm, because the as you walk in, the heat is blasting you in the face. You can see that there is a stove on the left-hand wall, and there is a a wooden post <laughs> that's out in front of this uh, opening on the on the western wall. And that's what's uh, producing all of the heat. And there is a uh, basically a spit with a dwarf tied to it. And he's bound up pretty good. He's His mouth isn't bound or anything, obviously, because, you know, you can hear him speaking. But there's all kinds of uh, posts sticking out of the ground. There's, a, there's like a makeshift wheel on one side that would, you know, they would be turning him. <laughs> a very crude spit. And the dwarf is upside down, facing the ground. And he's basically stripped down to his skivvies. He's covered in sweat. He looks like he's got a pretty good suntan. He looks very... It looks like he's actually been greased up. Or maybe oiled up for the cooking. <laughs> like a bodybuilder <laughs> or something. But uh, as he... Yeah, as, as you guys uh, look towards him, he... he turns his head to the right, looks at you, raises an eyebrow, and he says, uh, why don't you two knuckleheads quit admiring me? Quit admiring the beautiful view that you see in front of you, and get me down from here! I'm roasting alive! Okay. Well, hold get on, me hey, down! Cast oh, clouded daggers. <laughs> I'm just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> so, I'll, I'll, uh, I'll start uh, working his bonds off and trying to get him off. I got a, I got a small <sighs> knife I could go over and start helping too. You know, that cloud of daggers would be very brutal because every time the, the round would uh, turn, you know, it, you, the round would change and you'd be turning him still and he'd move inside of the cloud of daggers. Technically, <laughs> he would actually take quite a bit of damage. Oh, man, that would hurt, wouldn't it? That sure would. That would totally suck. Cloud of daggers it is, and no, I'm just kidding. <laughs> So is he actually over the fire right now, right? No, the fire's in the back. The fire's in the hole, but the, the fire's coming out. So he's slow oh. roasting. It's like a rotisserie. I got gotcha. you. <laughs> yeah. I see now. <laughs> yep. And you can see he's got a he's got a beautiful beard that's basically braided into two beards. I mean I mean what's better than one beard, two beards? I mean, come on. I, well, I thought about doing that tomorrow. It's not, time. it's not three though. You know, he's got a, his mouth is full of crooked and rotten teeth and his smell, his breath smells bad as you're up there to him, uh, Gimbal. And he says, get me down from here. I am burning alive. You idiot, get me down. It but certainly how a dwarf, like it. That's uh, how a dwarf would act anyway. So, <laughs> uh, get me down, he says. And of course, right. he, he's bald as well, so. I'll take out my small knife and cut some of the bonds. 
it just kind of falls to the floor. <laughs> good, good, uh, good ac- acrobatics you got there. <laughs> you tie, you uh, untie, well, cut all of the bonds so he can at least stand up and whatnot, or are you just gonna do a couple and wait for him to untie the others, or or what? No, I'm I'm working on him too. I I intend to completely free him. Okay, so he, you cut him down, and he kind of takes a there's like a linen sack on one side of the room he walks over and gets it and starts wiping off off all of this this grease and there's like a jug of grease and oh it just this is a uh, i'm so glad I, I i was hoping that you were going to be my son and one of his friends but uh nice to meet you my name is thord and what are you thord, doing here um, yeah thord. where are your sons uh, there, uh, that is a long story, my friends. But seeing that I don't have any more clothes and the Minotaurs, they put my clothes into the fire pit. Maybe you guys could have some spare traveling clothes. Maybe that I could uh, get out of my skivvies. Oh, um, no, but I know where you can get some if you don't uh, don't mind the... Uh... Where's that? A uh, little bit of blood staining on it. Oh, there's another uh, explorer got to squished in a, a nearby room. You can have his stuff, I'm sure. He doesn't need it anymore. Uh, but uh, about, what are you oh, doing down here? Well, I've... Well, uh, if you got a couple of minutes, I'll, I'll tell you. I mean, I, I know where you're talking about. You're talking about what the... The gargoyles, correct? Oh, come on. Some of you guys got to have something in your backpack. Point. Yeah, probably I, I not. I start clothes. moving around my bag. <laughs> no, nope, burn them on up. I'm not going to give you my robe of useful items. I will give him a drink of water, though. Oh, thank you so much. That, that's the best drink of water I've ever had, mate. This is well, I've, I'm here. The water skin. Dragon Bait says, give him a spoon, the world t shirt. <laughs> Jeez. <laughs> <laughs> I still got those fancy, dancy blue robes. I'll take any the anything. Stars. Well, uh, I, I do have a blanket. Uh, the, uh, well, the blanket would be good, I guess, as long as I get out of my skivvies. I just, uh, uh, these minotaur put all this grease all over me. Now I stink. I'm sticky. Probably. Yeah, I'll, I'll the, give them my blanket there. and say, uh, yeah, wrap that thing up. But uh, <laughs> it's eye level to me. I don't. I don't want to see that. <laughs> Big in a blanket, right? Oh. <laughs> he says, well, I, I guess I could... I'll be up front with you. I'll tell you why I'm here. You, you did save me. You did free me from becoming a dwarf jerky. But I've been traveling here with uh, another woman and my son and a couple of his friends. And we were looking for some... You know, we're adventurers. We're looking for some powerful magical relic this some key that does something i have no clue but we were brought on by this by this redheaded girl that kind of looked like ter- carrot top her name was her name was boo boo darwa yeah what's the deal with carrot top uh boo boo anyway <clears throat> now she's is her jokes any good she is <laughs> no but he she has a lot of props like whistles and <laughs> other anyway that's for another show we started exploring these places, and right off the bat, as we finally find the correct crypt, we find the Ambergold Estate. There's supposed to be all this treasure in here. There's supposed to be all this treasure in here, as as, as what Boo Boo was saying. And as soon as we come in, we're killed by some s- couple of my my friends, Telmac and Olivar. They're killed by some undead wraith. And, but my, my son, Grit, he actually came to the rescue with his magical sword. And he was able to, he was actually the one that was able to kill one of these wraiths. But by then it was, it was too late. Telmach and, and Olivar, they, they had bad fates. Uh, Darwa, she said she knew where she was going. I don't think she really did. She kept giving us the run around all over the place. 
And unfortunately, we... One of my friends, which is Bear, his, his name was Garen, but his nickname was Bear. He was crushed by this, by this huge hulking mass of stuff that fell down from the ceiling. I mean, it squashed him like a bug. Thanks to my keen senses, it didn't help uh, Bear. I was able to, to barely get out of the way. And then we, we, we found some doors. They, were, they, were, they had light. We went into another room. And then Darwa found some hidden false door and went inside. And that's, that's where we actually, we found this key, this altar that was supposed to have this key. So I guess maybe she did know what she was doing. She kept rolling up a piece of paper and, and looking at, I, I would imagine, a map or something like that. You know, we did a lot of swimming. We, we found an underground stream and, uh, you know, the, we, we went into a gargoyle room and good old, good old boo-boo, old Carrot Top, smart thing. She goes and attacks the gargoyles. They weren't even, I didn't even, I didn't even think they were real gargoyles. I just thought that they were statues. But that old knucklehead, she starts shooting arrows at them and stuff. And then they came to life. And then they killed one of our other friends. And then we were down. And then that's when she found this uh, secret door after we negotiated our, our way out of the trouble with these uh, three gargoyles. Uh, these, these things were, were ripping us to shreds. And then she paid them off. And then she found this hidden door. We went inside of this altar room and there was a key inside of it. There was like a glass case on the front, like a, like a glass panel. And we were looking at it. We were trying to find, well, Bear, he was pretty good at deactivating traps, but of course, Bear didn't fare out so well, well when that, that big, huge, huge, I, I don't know what the hell it was. It fell on top of him, crushed him like a grape. Anyways, so she got so impatient so she smashed the front of this this altar, this glass. So <laughs> when she cast a spell, it broke, and then all of a sudden, she turned to stone. I mean, she literally turned to stone. And she had this stupid wow. rat, this stupid rat. I'm so glad that it happened to this rat, too. This rat just kept squeaking and squeaking and squeaking, and the rat turned into stone as well. So after they were turned to stone I, I grabbed the earth key this this key that we were spending she said it was the earth key She's, and her, her face lit up there was this green energy inside and, and as she was cast it and the green energy was shining off of her face she says oh, I've got the earth key so I, I grabbed this thing and I grabbed it out of the altar, and, and there was another trap in there, and I, I narrowly escaped my I'm sure I probably would have been killed or something and we ran and uh, I gave it to Lump and we started running Grit and Lump and we were going to head out the way we came and and then all of a sudden when we went back into the gargoyle room, they were looking through all these weapons. I was standing over by this cave entrance. I said, come on guys, we got to leave and I slipped and when I slipped, this the, 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 forward, the current of the, of the water swept me away. It was all kinds of slime and rocks, and I couldn't stand up. And and then all of a sudden, I, I hit my head on a rock. And then as I as I came to, I had these two big cowmen looking at me, these minotaurs. And they strapped me up here. They, they drug me out of the water and took all my clothes off, threw them in the fire, took all of my gear, and threw it in the fire. And I don't even know what happened to Grit and Lump. But I hope they're okay. So this 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 room, this uh, secret passage you found, it was in the gargoyle room. Uh, it was north of the gargoyle room. Yeah, I can take you oh, and show it. Give yeah, me, yes, yes. Give me, give me some clothes. Well, quit being quit being finicky. Well, I gave you and, my blanket. That's all I got. I mean, it, it may it look like a like a tiny tee or some real stre stretchy tight shorts or something, but I mean, you are a little feller. But I mean, it's the best chance I got to get some skivvies. But I, I know where it, it was like a big prickly ball. This uh, this thing was about the size of uh, of my fist, and it was like this real prickly. Uh, it was like a purple stone, almost like a purple crystal, and then it had a like a like a 
like a golden light in the middle of it, kind of sparking. And I, I, I don't know what happened to Grit or Lump, and I, I hope they're and, still and looking grit, for me. And Grit has it now, the Earth Key? Yeah, Grit and Lump, my son and his friend. Yeah. Well, let's try to find him. Come on. Thanks for, thanks for the follows, guys. Well, yeah. Uh, yeah. We, yeah, but, but this girl, man, this honey, this boo-boo, geez, man.